All right, today's question is cousins in binary tree. In this question, they give us a binary tree, and you can kind of think of it as a family tree. So there's generation one, gen two, gen three, and gen four. So cousins, if, we, if X and Y are cousins, that means they are, in, they are in the same generation, but they have different parents. So for example here, two and three cannot be cousins because they share the same parent one, uh, but four and five can be cousins, four and six can be cousins, four and seven can't be cousins because they're a parent-child relationship. Um, so yeah, that's cousins. And now we want to check if something, if two nodes are cousins. So the way we do that is we'll use, uh, we'll use breadth first search. We'll use a modified version of breadth first search. The good thing about breadth first search is that uh, it allows us to search through the binary search, uh, through, through the binary tree, uh, generation by generation. So for example, let's say we have our queue. So this is a brief refresher on breadth for search. And um, what you do is you put in the root node here, so one, and then you pop off the root node, and then you add the children onto the end of this queue. So two and three. And then you just repeat the same thing. So we pop off two, and we add the children four onto the end of the queue, pop off three, add in five and six, uh, pop off four, add in seven and eight, pop off five, no children, six, seven, eight. And then when our queue is empty, that means we have processed the entire binary tree. Okay, so how does a BFS help us? Well, notice here that we are, we've been going through our uh, family tree in generation. So here is gen one, and then here is everybody in gen two, um, here's everybody in Gen 3, and then here's everybody in Gen 4. Now, a normal BFS doesn't give you this information, so this is where we're going to have to modify it to be able to know uh, the generation boundaries. Now, why do we want to know something like that? Well, let's say uh, our, our example is we want to know if 4 and 6 are cousins. So if we were able to have these generation markers, this is what our BFS will look like. We start scanning at one, and that's the end of gen generation, and we put in two and three. Now we read two, and two will have a kid in the new generation, which is four. At this point, we found our new, uh, our new, uh, or one of a target for what we're trying to search for. And then now all we have to do is make two checks. So one, uh, is six a sibling? Because if six is a sibling, then that means they can't be cousins. So here, two children is four. All we have to do is check that the other child of two is not six. So in this case, two doesn't have another child. So six is not a sibling and we're, and we're good. So the second question we wanna ask is, is six a child of someone in your generation. So in this case, uh, here is us, we're here right now. We just have to ask the rest of the, everybody in our generation, so in this case three, if three has a kid, that is six. So we continue, we process two, we process three, and three says, okay, my kids are five and six. So at this point, we found six, so that means that they are indeed cousins. So these are the two questions that we check for. And this is possible because of this uh, generation boundary. Because if we didn't have this generation boundary, then we wouldn't know when to stop, right? So we could have something like uh, one, two, three, and then four. And then our question becomes our three and four cousins. But then our, our Q would look like one, two, three, four. And you can see that three and four both exist in our queue at the same time. Uh, so the only way to differentiate that they're in different generations, so therefore not cousins, is that we have a generation boundary. Okay, let's try coding this out. So in the beginning, let's just go through a regular uh, breadth first search. And then we can see how we can slowly modify it to what we want it to be. So a breadth first search uses a queue. So here we have our queue. All right, so the next thing is that we want to add 
the root into our queue. And then while our queue is not empty, uh, we will pop off the top of the queue, and then we'll add its descendants. So if n dot left is not equal to null, we will add left. And then if n dot right is not equal to null, we will add the right side. So this is your typical uh, breadth first search. Now, how do we handle the fact that we want to keep track of uh, generation boundaries? We can use the idea of a generation uh, population counter. So this is a gen pop counter. So that means, you know, for example, at a point like this, it'd be nice to know that your generation population counter is one. There's only one other person left in your generation. That means we only have to read one here. So, you know, at this point, our gen pop should be three. Here it should be two. Here it should be one. That makes sense. So here our generation population is one. Okay, so let's have our generation population counter. So we start off uh, with one because we have one person, it's the root, and there's only one person in that generation. And every time that we read a node from the queue, our generation population goes down by one. Now what happens if our generation population is equal to zero? That means we are now at the start of a new generation and we need to reset our generation population to be the correct value. So what is this correct value? Let's see. When we're doing breadth first search, um, so we do one, and then we put in two and three down. When we're about to put in four, so we eliminate the two, and then we put in four, uh, and let's see, eliminate the three, and we put in five and six. Okay, let's do this as an example. Now we're about to read seven. So at this point, uh, gen pop is equal to zero. And when we start this loop, gen pop is still equal to zero. And we want it to update it to a correct value of three. Well, three is just the size of this queue. So this is the size of the queue at this moment. Because breadth first search means that we read generation by generation. That means when we start processing gen three, one, that means you know we've already finished gen two. And then two, that means everybody in your generation has already been added because you finished processing gen two. So all your children have already been added. And you know the, the fact that you can add in seven means that four, five, six must already be in the queue. So it's just the size of the queue. So here, gen pop is equal to the queue dot size. Okay, so now we've added these generation boundaries. The next thing to do is actually search for x or y. So if uh, n.left.val is equal to x, then the person that we're searching for is y. So we'll initialize y to be negative 1 because uh, no, but no node is negative 1, so that just means we don't know what we're searching for yet. Uh, else, if n.left.val is equal to y, then target is equal to x. And then if we didn't find any target, then we just continue on searching in our uh, breathford search. Okay, so let's do a similar thing for the right side. Target equals to y. Else. Okay. So one thing that we can add here is a sibling check. So this is the case for if we're testing our five and six cousins. So that means we, we read five and now we set target equal to six. We need to make sure that six is not our immediate, um, is not our sibling. So here we'll do if n.write.val is equal to target, then we can return false. Okay, so what does it mean at the end here if target does not equal to negative 1? That means we are now searching for our cousin. So since the sibling check must have passed, 
all we have to do is check everybody else in our generation. So while generation population is greater than zero, so there's people left in our generation, n is going to be equal to q.remove. And every time we remove, we uh, remove one person from our generation. And if n.left is not equal to null and n.left.val is equal to target, we can return true. If n.right is not equal to null and n.right.val equals to target, we can also return true. Now at the end here, if we've searched through our generation and nobody had a kid that was our cousin, then that means our cousin is not in this generation, so we return false. Um, and then here, if we search through our whole tree and we never found anybody that's named X or Y, then that means they belong in a different family tree and we also return false. Okay, let's see if everything is correct. Um, add, cannot find simple add. Oh, so this should be Q. So Q, add, and Q, add. Cool. All right. That's the end of today, and I'll see you on the next one.